Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and today I will be talking about Quackamelee or the design of Quackamelee. Uh, if you haven't heard of the game before, it's sort of described like a Metroidvania style game. I haven't actually finished a single one of the Metroid games, nor have I played them for more than a couple of hours, so I can't really say. Uh, but the general theme is it's a 2D platformer game and you run around um, collecting things that give you new abilities, basically. Um, the brilliant part of this game is how the combat and the platforming sort of flow together. Um, I will start the video and you'll basically see what I mean. Um, this is from... Um, hello? Yeah, this is the very start of the game, um, where you learn to play and stuff like that, basically. So at this point, you don't really have any um, any real combat abilities. Instead you have to start um, by learning how to jump, how to um, evade stuff, um, and for fighting you basically have a standard hit and you have sort of grappling which is, which is the theme of this game. So here they're teaching you how the um, evasion thing works. Basically you hold a button and you get some invisibility frames which means you can jump through scary stuff and here is what happens when you actually pick stuff up um, because this goat seems to be watching the statues and when you break them you get magical powers because that makes total sense um, I actually really enjoy the sort of graphical style of the game there are a few different things that I'll come back to later which ruin it for me but some of the animation and stuff like that is really good. And I'm sorry about the extra mouse pointer here. I actually encoded it into, uh, into my video, so I can't get rid of it. So you'll see that static at um, different points of the video, basically. Um, but yeah, um, so here is one of the things which I really dislike about the game. Um, it may seem a small thing, but it's really annoying in my opinion. Sure, you want the sort of colorful thing, and there you have your first... Uh, yeah, you want the colors and you have a certain graphical style to go with. I just think it has such a ne negative impact on how the game is perceived that... Um, I wouldn't actually recommend having these sort of flashing things. Um, I'm not sure how... Um, how weird it is for something, someone who has something like uh, epilepsy or stuff like that, but it makes me feel weird and I don't really have problems with other games. Um, but yeah, at the start you can basically, you can roll for invincibility, you can jump, you can hit and you can grapple. And then you unlock these um, directional moves. So the first one, I'll just go back a couple of seconds. The first one is the uppercut. And if you had your eyes with you, you see um, this is a green, blo green block. Green block means you have to uh, hit downwards, which you haven't unlocked at this point of the game because you pick up the first one. Uh, red is upwards, blue is uh, sideways, and yellow is sort of standing still and hitting the special button. Um, so yeah, you can see the sort of icons in the wall here teaching you how to play the game, uh, which is a pretty weird option in my opinion. I mean, he could have just told you. And since I'm actually using a PS3 pad instead of the, um, the 360 controller, uh, this won't be accurate for my uh, controller either. So yeah, here I'm at, in a later part of the game, so I'm just gonna show off, sort of, there you have it. You have up, you have left, you have down, and then you have your basic standing still. Um, yeah, basic standing still attack. Um, these are actually incorporated into both the platforming because they obviously move you around in the world. Um, so the red one gives you both a bit of sideways movement and a lot of upwards. The blue one is more sideways and then the green one is going down. And they're also used for fighting. Um, so every time you unlock a new power, you basically get to a battle 
um, showing you how to use that ability in battle because some enemies have shields of certain colors which you can only break using a certain um, certain special move now this is um, at the start again because as you can see here below the health bar um, there are no yellow dots one yellow dot is one point of stamina which means you can use one special move now you can never use the same special move again without landing on the ground so you can't like chain uh, blue stuff all the way across the room um, which is a sort of way to balance the game basically because that would be overpowered as hell you could basically not have any sort of jumping puzzles if you could uh, do that um, so here is one of the early um, uh, early combats as you can see here Y is the button for grappling again I'm using a PS3 controller um, so it's the triangle or something I don't really remember it's been a couple of days since I played this and the controls are actually surprisingly difficult to pick up again after you've played it um, it takes a while to get used to because there are just so many buttons that you're using while playing it um, I'll get back to that but yeah so you have your basic sort of punches and once enemies get below a certain amount of health you can grapple them while grappling you're getting a couple of invincibility frames and you can also choose the direction to throw them in as you can see here and enemies that are thrown onto other enemies basically stun them or knock them back or both uh, which means you can basically combo um, combo the grapples into a bunch of different enemies to create sort of a combo um, giving you a certain number of hits uh, the combos just give you more money which you can use to buy uh, sort of extra shards of health and stamina now here I have two points of stamina um, but I'll just show off sort of a basic puzzle here um, the waypointing is super forgiving as you can see you just roll you hit the red one and in this case I did it too low so I fall down now um, it takes a while for the stamina to recharge uh, which you can see in the top here the first one is almost done and then it will start on the next one but if you roll into something like slime you just respawn again at the uh, at the platform you did the jump from so here I'm trying to do it um, with no stamina which means you die so you have to sort of stand around and then you can do it again um, yeah so once you once you get a new special move it basically has first one platforming section like the one I just show you here with the with a block so it has a bit of puzzling to let you learn the move um, and how to use it for movement because obviously how you're moving influences how the battle will go and then after that you have these sort of arena style battles uh, where the doors just close you in uh, with a bunch of enemies and you have to learn how to use your newfound ability in combat as well so here it's uh, knocking them up so you have to trigger them first and the attack and then you hit them from the back which means you can grapple them and use them to kill other enemies so what tends to happen is the battles always start with one enemy so you basically fool around with that for a bit until you know the mechanic and then they throw a bunch of um, a bunch of old enemies in with the new ones to sort of integrate them into a wider part of the game um, I'll see I think it happens when this guy dies yeah so then you have new enemies which means you have to use your uh, uh, use your ability both for movement and fighting at the same time so the progression of the uh, power-ups is really good um, the game flows really well the problem is it's just a bit too long so uh, you learn kinda complicated moves and there are some rooms which really kick my ass um, and if you put the game down because you get frustrated uh, by not finishing a room it will actually be harder the next time because when you come back not only will you have to sort of get used to the controls again you also have to fight the uh, the difficult boss or enemies again yeah and every time you finish a battle um, 
uh, a piñata appears basically which gives you more gold um, just as a sort of reward for finishing the battle um, apart from the uh, fighting and the platforming there is also a sort of um, world switching mechanic which also ties both into the combat and the platforming uh, in this case you have these sort of portals like uh, at the start again you're just fighting one single enemy um, piece of cake nothing hard then you're fighting two of the same enemy just to learn how they move and then you will integrate the uh, world switching mechanic um, near the end well maybe more like the middle of the game um, you actually get the ability to switch worlds because as you can see here this white guy is in the other world uh, which means you can't hit him but he can hit you so you can kill this guy but you can't kill the white guy so then you have to fight one guy as you can see there he can hit you and then you uh, jump into the portal thingy and then you can fight the other guy um, so at the start this isn't used a ton it's used more for platforming uh, sort of puzzle platform stuff uh, but near the end um, there will be a lot of different enemies that force you to switch between worlds and there you have a pinata broken as well I think this is oh okay. this was actually the moment that I pretty much fell in love with the art style because what happens here is you'll just run along the bottom here and boom giant lizard uh, dragon lion thingy I think this just looks amazing um, unfortunately you don't fight this directly but you see it again in other parts of the game I just think it looks so amazing if you just put that guy on the box art I'd buy this game um, I wouldn't actually recommend this game for everyone because it's um, sort of specific in uh, how it plays and it's a bit hard to get into, or it was for me at least. Maybe just because I didn't expect something like this. I really didn't know what to expect. Um, but here is just showing off sort of a more difficult part of the game. Uh, I actually haven't beaten this part. It's really, really tricky. Um, and as you can see here, the platforms, uh, both on the sides and this T-shape here, um, they're sort of blurred out and they have a glow effect which you probably can't see in the video uh, which means that when you switch worlds these will become um, sort of interactable or solid but the one at the bottom here will disappear instead so this means that you have to sort of combo both your jumps and your special moves that running up the side was one special move uh, there's another one which basically launches launches you from a platform uh, straight across, um, but it doesn't really apply in this case. So you use your um, runny thing. I don't remember what it's called. It's called sheep something. I think sheep dash to get up to here. You boost with a special move, and you run again and you jump and you switch world and you combo and everything so the game sort of becomes more complex but it doesn't um, it doesn't really matter as much because it's so well tied into the game like if you only used the um, the moves for platforming and then used something else for combat it would probably be harder because you just didn't get to uh, you didn't get to use the same moves as often and here we go again, you switch worlds, you punch and you run and you're supposed to sort of switch world to uh, run all the way up the side there um, I've made it a bit further but not all the way to the top um, this is another part which I really appreciate in these sort of bigger uh, areas uh, it's just a teleport mechanic and then you can see the entire map so you can only teleport to these different uh, heads, stone statues, but it allows you to sort of go around easier and pick up more stuff because 
in essence it's a, a collecting type game the combat is good the platforming is good but you will still have to, um, to basically to get the good ending as you can see in the top here I'm 70% of the way through in five hours um, which means you will basically have to run around and collect a bunch of stuff but you have your map you can also zoom in I'm not sure I, if I do it here um, because I haven't watched this video in a couple of days um, apparently not unfortunately um, yeah here is just another part of the store or another part of the game which is the store every time you touch one um, they work as sort of checkpoints and every time you quit the game I think you respawn at the latest um, it looks like an altar but it's a shop basically so you can buy a few different things health region stamina boost uh, which makes it takes shorter time for it to recharge and then you can buy health chunks which give you more health it's like Zelda basically if you get three or four uh, chunks you get one extra heart which gives you more health and the same with stamina with four chunks uh, you get one extra point and again when I buy this here you're going to see the same sort of weird effect with the epilepsy stuff like boom so bright so many colors I just really dislike that um, so I th still think it's a good game I wouldn't recommend it for everyone but if you're just looking for something to sort of kick up your feet and play with a controller um, you can give it a shot it wouldn't surprise me if it's up for the um, Steam holiday sale or something like that uh, if you can pick it up for like 10 bucks I really think you should give it a shot just because it's so well integrated with everything both the art style and the combat and the platforming everything flows really well um, it's just I don't know it's a nice challenge it's just not quite what I expected um, which is a really poor criticism of a game um, but I just like I played through it once and then I played a bit of it more just to make the video and after that I haven't really picked it up I mean sure if you can get it for 10 bucks it's five hours of solid entertainment um, but if you have something else to play or if you're not really a fan of the platforming type games or even if you don't have a hand controller I don't think I'd recommend it so it's a cool game it has some cool mechanics but it still doesn't quite reach the level of polish or something well it's very well polished it looks amazing sound is great the music is pretty good yeah I really want to recommend it I want to say it's amazing but if you can or if you have 10 bucks I'd say spend it on Mark of the Ninja instead I just think that's a better experience all around this has been Jonas uh, feeling sort of weird about guacamole um, thanks for watching if you reach the end and click the like or leave a comment below